In this video, we're going to talk about the Fulgor Milano gas ranges. Now, there's a few different versions of the gas ranges out there. Um, in particular, this one we're going to focus on in this video is the S1 version. So in this case, this is an F6 PGR, so Pro Gas Range 36, meaning 36 inches wide, 6 as in 6 burners, S1, so the, the first iteration of, uh, of this unit, so, uh, or of this model. So F6 PGR 366 S1. Now there's also S2 versions uh, of the ranges out there, and there's a, uh, this is a Sophia range. There's also a line called the Accento range out there. So the S1 versions of the Sophia use this uh, method of ignition uh, and with safety thermocouple and we'll talk about that whole gas system for the oven. Um, the S2 uses a different system, electronic based, uh, which will not be the focus of this uh, video. Uh, but the Accento, which is the newer line, the Accento all gas ranges also use this system. And interestingly enough, this will also be applicable to um, the dual fuel 48 inch Sophia uh, range which is electric ovens and gas cooktop but there's also now a gas griddle on that model and that griddle uses this very similar system so uh, consisting of uh, here we have a sparker right for igniting the flame or igniting the gas you have a thermocouple, uh, which is for safety, for keeping the gas flowing uh, when a flame is present. You have your control valve. Now, this is the control valve. We'll talk a little bit more about this in detail. That's in this model. Uh, it's a dual valve control valve. Uh, in the case of a griddle, you would have a single valve because it's only one burner. But this will control the broil and the bake burner uh, in this uh, range. Uh, and then this is your burner. So what we're going to talk about is some of the variables that are involved in uh, igniting the range and then also some of the variables that would be uh, at play uh, in keeping the flame uh, lit or how the unit modulates temperature. So uh, I've got all the pieces externally here that are actually uh, inside this unit just for illustrative purposes. After going through all the parts and how they work together, uh, we'll actually uh, light the oven inside and do some uh, experimentation and some troubleshooting and things like that. So first and foremost, we'll start with this valve, which is uh, quite complex. Uh, you've got some switches on it, as you can see, some micro switches, um, and uh, another micro switch here, which you do have to make sure the switch is in the right position. So this is the dual control valve that's inside this oven. So the way this works um, is when you push in the knob like this, you will get a spark. And if we open up this door, we can hear the spark going off. So to properly ignite this range, you have to push in the knob and we say hold it in for three seconds. You really only have to hold it in for one. When you push the knob in, you will hear the sparker going and you will hear it going for seven to nine seconds. If I do nothing else, it will expire and nothing happens. But the way to ignite this unit is to push in the knob for three count and then turn it to full. And I can hear the gas flowing. I can see the gas is ignited. And whether or not the gas is ignited doesn't matter, doesn't affect that, the fact that the sparker is still going. And I'll explain why and how all of that works. When you initially push in the knob for that three seconds, what you're doing is essentially 
pressing in this switch inside. Just like that. And what you're doing is then sending a signal to this T0 module. And inside this T0 module is basically a capacitor. So when you push in the knob, you're charging the capacitor in here. And that capacitor will dissipate for seven to nine seconds, as we saw earlier in the demonstration of how to ignite. It's going to do two jobs. As it's dissipating, it's sending a signal to the spark generator. Connected to the spark generator is the actual spark probe. And the spark probe, and the burner is configured or oriented in the oven base like this. The spark probe is inserted in here. And if we're ever replacing one of these, you just got to make sure that you get this groove that's in the ceramic um, to that spring clip. And you can see it's in this orientation. Now, what you'll notice is that there, the port is not anywhere near the sparker. Um, ideally, when the spark is going off, it's arcing to this bar on the burner. It doesn't need to be um, near the hole, right? There's enough gas that's going through the system um, for it to ignite. So we talked about how the T0 has two jobs. So the one job is to, uh, the capacitor will drive the spark module. So the other thing that this uh, T0 module is doing is while it's dissipating and the spark is going, it's sending a signal through this white wire, which you can see splices in with the copper wire, and is connected into the valve like that. So it's sending a signal to the valve, and you're saying, what is that signal doing? So the other thing that I'm doing when I push this in, yes, I'm closing this switch, but the physical travel of this is also pushing and closing a magnet valve inside. And the magnet valve is in here. And the signal that's coming from this T0 module electrically grabs the valve, the magnet valve that we've now pushed into proximity. And while this is dissipating, it holds that magnet valve open. So the second step in igniting, after we've pushed it in and held it for that three seconds, right, is to then turn, which is difficult to do. We're pushing in, closes the switch, sends a signal to the T0. The T0 sends a signal to the spark module and the sparker starts going. It's also sending a micro voltage back through this white wire. So when we're pushing in this knob, we are physically pushing in the magnet valve inside. The electrical signal that's coming back holds the magnet valve open. So even when we release the knob, that magnet valve is now held open. So the idea is you push it in, hold it, charge the capacitor, and then turn. Turn it all the way. And so that allows the gas to flow through the valve system and into the burner. So during that seven to nine seconds, the gas has to flow through the tubing system inside the oven, comes through the injector into this gas tube. And the layout is like a horseshoe shape. So the gas is traveling through the burner, so you'll see all of these light up first, and then it works its way around. You'll actually see blue flame in around this channel, and then comes back down through all of these ports. And finally, at the end of its journey, it will encounter the thermocouple probe. So the job of the thermocouple is to basically keep the gas valve open. So when you're igniting it, you're sending the sparker, you're artificially holding the gas valve open with the signal from the T0. And during that seven to nine seconds, I'll just insert the thermocouple in place, 
The gas has to flow, ignite, make its way around the burner, and finally, through the last port, come in contact with the thermocouple. And this thermocouple has to reach 600 degrees Celsius, all happening within that seven to nine seconds, in order to send a high enough microvoltage back into the valve to keep that magnet valve open. So basically, once the flame is lit, this hands off the responsibility of keeping the valve open inside here to the thermocouple. So all of that has to happen in that seven to nine seconds. And that's why it's important to get the proper technique of ignition. Push in firmly for a three count, one, two, three, and turn to full. That should be it. And leave it there for about 15 seconds and then you can adjust it back to whatever set temperature you desire. So that takes care of the ignition of the burner. Now, in some cases, some customers may um, experience the flame going out while cooking. So they'll, they'll ignite it no problem, they'll preheat it, um, they'll put their food in, <clears throat> and then they come back half an hour later only to realize that the flame has gone out. So the way this valve works and the way this oven works is that once ignited, the burner never actually goes out. The flame never turns off. It's like a barbecue. Um, but what happens is you also have this thermostat feeler bulb. So when you choose a set temperature uh, on the knob, on this valve, it will continue to allow the gas to run at full, full heat, um, until this valve or until this thermostat uh, gets to the temperature that corresponds to on, to, uh, on the knob. And what will happen then is that inside here is an expansion valve and it will start to put pressure on the valve and reduce the amount of gas that will flow. So basically modulating the gas flow to the burner. So even though it's set at 430, once it's reached that point, it will actually reduce the amount of gas that comes through. And so that's also why our minimum temperature is 275, because that's the lowest amount of gas that we can sustain in the burner um, without it actually going out. But in some cases, some customers experience it going out. And that is what this little guy is for. And this is your low flame screw uh, setting. So if you go through the manual, you will, it will describe that you basically, if, you ha if you're experiencing the, the flame going out or if you're experiencing um, temperature regulation issues, this is the exercise you should do. You're going to start the range, hold it in for three, turn it to full, just turn it to about 500. And you're going to leave it at 500 for about 20 minutes. And that's going to be long enough for it to reach temperature at 500. And then you're going to turn it down to the lowest setting, down to that 275, right? At this point, because it's already at 500, it's going to modulate and reduce the gas flow down to the lowest point. And if it's too low, right, the flame may extinguish on its own, or it may be too low to actually keep the thermocouple heated enough to keep the valve open, and you'll hear that valve close. Uh, so during that exercise, what you're going to do is make adjustments to this screw in order to increase the amount of gas that's allowed to come through at its lowest setting point or its lowest uh, flow through level. Um, these come factory set based on ideal factory laboratory conditions, but as we know, conditions in the field are going to vary. They're not going to be a laboratory. So depending on your incoming pressure, um, depending on um, other gas products in your house, whatever. Uh, you may have to make adjustments to this. And when you're doing a conversion from natural gas to propane, uh, the recommendation is that you close this screw completely. And so it is partially open uh, when it comes from the factory configured for natural gas, but for propane, which is a higher pressure gas, we typically close this screw all the way. Now that isn't to say that's the hard and fast rule, right? You have to observe the operation of the oven and determine whether or not, yes, maybe I need to open that screw a little bit to increase the amount of gas that's coming through at the lowest modulated setting.
So counterclockwise opens that valve and uh, clockwise will close it, uh, will reduce the low flame. Another reason why customers may experience or you may experience the flame going out is also the proximity of the flame or where the probe is actually contacting the flame. Um, so these also do come factory set but you know with use you may get expansion and contraction things may bend or move out of position or again because of pressure other variables at play the flame may not or the probe may not be in an ideal position for the flame uh, and I'll try and throw up a graphic showing kind of uh, the the heat mapping on a flame um, so where it actually comes out of this port um, will actually be one of the coolest places for the flame because the gas is coming out and then it ignites um, so in some cases if you find that you know your 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 flame isn't going out at the low setting but uh, you're finding that the oven is still going out you can try to change the angle of this probe so that it sits a little bit higher in the flame and typically the flame gets hotter as it uh, moves away from the gas source and then starts to dissipate and get cooler again so changing the position of the probe can often also improve the situation so that it's in a better contact with the flame. Now this is an older model. So you may see some differences from the unit that you may be working on or the unit that you may have. Um, most production units uh, will have screws with a Phillips head on it. Another thing I'd like to point out is that you can actually hear the valve close if there's no flame present. If it tries to hand off the job of keeping the valve open to the thermocouple but no flame is present, you'll actually hear that magnet valve release and close. So let's demonstrate that now. We'll hold it in, charge up the capacitor, and then we'll release it. We'll let it dissipate for the seven to nine seconds. and that was the sound of the valve closing. So we'll push it in, turn it to full, and you'll see the flame ignite. And now the great thing about this particular model, this early production, is that the thermocouple's on the front and we can actually see it through this, this lovely uh, cutout in the burner. See if we can get that thermocouple into a worse position and potentially shut the valve. Let's pull it out a little further. So there you see, with the thermocouple not being in direct contact with the flame, it loses temperature, gets down below that 600 degrees Celsius, and eventually the valve shuts.